There are lots of things all around us, exciting things that surround us. But how does it work? Do you know? How is it made? Do you know? Things that go up, things that go down, things that go pop, things that go round. We've got special cameras to show you inside. It's going to be a big surprise. I'm Maddie, and today I'm doing some digging. Right, that's one bucket full, but I need to move all of this. We're going to need something bigger than this bucket. What do you think we could use? <laughs> that's right, a digger. But do you know how a digger works? Let's find out. How does it work? Digger! To find out how a digger works, I've come to a building site. You should never go on a building site without a grown-up, but I've got special permission to show you round. Come and see. There's lots of different types of machines on a building site. Massive drills, concrete pouring trucks, and... Here comes the digger! Can you hear the engine? It's noisy, isn't it? Wow! A digger is a really useful machine. This part is called the cab. It's where the driver sits. And this is Adrian. It's his job to operate the digger. Up there, the part that looks like a giant claw, is the bucket. Adrian, can you bring it down? Whoa! It's like a metal dinosaur. <laughs> this bucket can carry a lot more stones and soil than my one can. The bucket is attached to the dipper because it dips up and down when the digger scoops things up. And the long part there is called the boom. Can you see it's moving the bucket and the dipper up and down? And down here are the tracks. They are enormous. They go round in a big loop, like a giant belt moving round and round. And just take a look at these ridges. The tracks are really important because they help the digger grip when it's going up or down a mound of earth. But why doesn't the digger sink into the soil? Can you see how the tracks are wide and long? This is what helps the digger stay on top of the soil. Let me show you how. If I walk up this mound with my worker boots on, watch what happens. It's quite difficult because my boots keep slipping and they want to sink in. So let's try something else. These attachments make my feet wider. They have a bigger surface area. Can you see how the bottoms are much wider than my shoes? And they've also got some grips on the bottom, just like the ridges on the tracks of the digger. Right, let's see if I can get up the mound. It works! It's so much easier! Now my weight is spread out across the attachments, which means I don't sink into the soil like I did in my work boots. It's exactly the same way the tracks on a digger work. And I made it to the top. <laughs> but to find out how a digger does it, let's take a closer look. As the digger goes up the mound, the tracks move round and round. The track is made up of lots of small pieces of metal called plates. The outside of the track is called the shoe. It has lots of grooves on it for gripping. The driver in the cab pulls a lever to make the digger move forward. A wheel at the back of the track called a sprocket turns. Teeth 
on the outside of the sprocket are locked into gaps in the track, pushing the track around. As the track turns, rollers at the bottom help move the track along the ground. If the digger hits a bumpy patch, the idler wheel at the front is pushed back into a spring, which helps the digger bounce back and keep moving along. Diggers are really useful, aren't they? Now, let's go and see our digger in action. I've brought some of my special cameras with me to attach to the digger. This one is going to look at the tracks as the digger goes up and over the mounds. This camera will let us see the bucket scoop up soil. And this one gives us a view from the cab, showing us what Adrian sees. Time to get digging. Now Adrian's taking the digger to the other side of the building site. Looks like it's time for a delivery. The ground is really bumpy, isn't it? But the recoil spring is keeping the digger nice and steady. And the shoes are gripping the stones so it can climb up to the top. Whoa! This digger weighs the same as four T-Rex dinosaurs, but it's not sinking into the soil, is it? That's because those wide tracks are spreading the weight, just like my shoe attachments. Adrian is lowering and raising the bucket as it scoops up soil to put in the back of the tipper truck. He doesn't even have to move the tracks because the cab rotates. How clever is that? And lastly, Adrian pulls a lever so the bucket can tip the soil into the truck. There it goes. I think diggers are amazing. What was your favourite bit about finding out how a digger works? Can you remember what the outside of the track is called? That's right, it's the shoe. Did you like the sound of the digger's engine? Wow. And did you see the bucket dump the soil into the tipper truck on my special camera? When I visit muddy places or it's wet weather, I always like to wear my wellies. Do you have wellies? I've got red ones. Wellies are great because you can walk in muddy places, jump in puddles, <laughs> and they'll always keep our feet nice and dry. But how do they keep our feet dry? Do you know how wellies are made? Let's find out. How is it made? Wellies. Wellies are made in a place like this. A welly factory. Here they make wellies in lots of different colours and sizes. Wellies are made from a type of plastic called PVC. It's smooth, shiny and flexible, so they're comfortable to wear and easy to pull on and off. And on the bottom is the sole, which has grooves in it. And this helps us to grip in the rain and the mud. Today at the factory you're making blue wellies with red soles. Welly making starts with these thousands of PVC pellets. And to make a pair of wellies a bit like this, we're going to need this amount of pellets. 600 grams. That's about the same weight as 12 hen's eggs. <laughs> but they don't look very colourful, do they? So we have to add some smaller blue pellets to the clear PVC ones to make our final mix. The pellets go into this metal barrel here where they're heated up to around 180 degrees. That's the same temperature as you'd have an oven at home if you were baking a cake. 
Inside the barrel, the pellets melt and go runny. But we've got one melting machine for the blue mix and another for a red mix. Look, can you see the red pellets mixed in with the clear ones? And now for the fun part. Look at this machine. It's called an injection mould. This is Roger. It's his job to keep things running smoothly. These two parts are the top and bottom moulds for the welly boot. It's a bit like a jelly mould, except this is a welly mould. This part here, that's a mould for the sole of the boot. And then this is the model foot, which is the size that we want our welly boot to fit. First, Roger puts a sock on the model foot, and that will make the inside of the boot. Then he presses a button, and off we go. I've got one of my special cameras on a long pole, and it's connected to my phone screen so that I can see what's going on, and we can find out what happens next. Each machine has 10 welly moulds on it. That will make five pairs of wellies. And watch how the injection mould goes round and round. It's like a carousel for wellies. Let's take a look underneath the machine. The runny PVC liquid is being pushed from the melting machine into the injection mould by these pistons. First, the red PVC goes in to make the sole of the boot. Next, the sole gets pressed onto the model foot, ready for the blue PVC. When the piston moves forward, it's pushing the runny blue PVC liquid into the mould to make the boot. And this mould makes the part of the welly you put your foot inside. And here it is. A welly! <laughs> the liquid PVC has cooled down and turned back into a solid in the same shape as the welly mould. How brilliant is that? But they're not quite finished yet. The wellies have some rough edges and a bit too much sock poking out, so they need a good trim. And that's Tracy's job. Can you hear the buzzy sound of the trimming machine? And here we have a finished pair of blue and red wellies, ready to have some splashy fun in. What did you like most about seeing how wellies are made? Do you remember the name of the material wellies are made of? That's right, it's PVC. Did you hear the sound of the machine that trims the top of the wellies? And did you see my special camera when the pistons were injecting the moulds? So the next time you're splashing around having fun in wellies, you'll know how they're made. And if you see a digger, you'll know how the tracks work to move it over muddy ground. Right, I think it's about time to get this lot moved. I'll see you next time. Take it away, Adrian! There are lots of things